in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Suppose we say that we have no sin. We fool ourselves, and we are not honest. But if our sins we confess, God remains faithful. He will forgive all our sins. Therefore, our sins we confess to God our Father. God of much mercy, we confess we are born with sin and we are not clean. Our thoughts, signs, and deeds sin against you. We do wrong things. We don't do right things. We don't completely love you. We don't love other people the same as we love ourselves. We have earned your punishment <coughs> now and forever. Because of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, make us new, and lead us. Then we will enjoy your will, follow you, and give glory to your holy name. Amen. Almighty God truly has mercy on you. He has given his only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die for you. Jesus was the sacrifice for your sin. Therefore, God forgives all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul praises the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. I speak bravely against my enemies, because I rejoice that you save me. No one is wholly the same as the Lord. <clears throat> no one is the same as God. No one is strong the same as Him. The woman with no children will have seven children, but the woman with many children will become weak. The Lord kills and he gives life. The Lord puts people in the grave and he raises them alive. The Lord makes people poor and rich. He makes people humble and he lifts them up. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Lord Jesus, show your power and come. Help us with your wonderful strength and grace. Then our sins will not burden us, but your grace and mercy will free us. Lord Jesus, you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament lesson is from Micah chapter, chapter 5. Bethlehem, Ephrathah, no matter you are only a small town among the many towns in Judah, I will send someone to rule Israel, and that ruler will come from Bethlehem. He truly comes from long ago, from eternity past. Therefore, God will leave his people until the woman gives birth. Then all his people will come again to Israel. He will have the Lord's strength to shepherd his people. He will have the glory of the name of the Lord his God. His people will live safe because he will be great in all the earth. He will be peace for them. When our enemy, Assyria, comes into our land and attacks our homes, then we will send seven shepherds and eight princes to fight our enemy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the 
New Testament lesson is from Hebrews chapter 10. When Jesus came into the world, he said, God, you didn't want sacrifice and offering, but you prepared a body for me. Burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin don't please you. Then I said, Look, I came to do what you want, O God. The book says what I will do. First, Jesus said, God, you don't want sacrifice and offering. Burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin don't please you. The law commands people to give those sacrifices. Then Jesus said, Look, I came to do what you want, O God. Jesus takes away the first thing, the offerings and the sacrifices. Then Jesus did the second thing, meaning Jesus did what God wants. Jesus offered his body once for all people to make us holy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary hurried to the hill country in Judah. She went to a certain city, to Zechariah's house, and she greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting and then the baby, John, jumped in her womb. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth, and she said with a loud voice, Mary, God has blessed you much, and blessed is the child that you will give birth to. How can it happen that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? When you greeted me, the baby inside me jumped with joy. God blesses you because when the Lord told you what will happen, you believed. Mary said, My soul praises the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior because he looked with favor on his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty God has done wonderful things for me, and his name is holy. In every generation, God shows mercy to people who honor him. He has done mighty things. He scattered the proud people. The powerful people on their thrones, God threw down, but the humble people, he lifted up. God filled hungry people with good things, but the rich people, he sent away empty. God helped his servant, Israel, because he remembered his promise of mercy. God made that promise for our fathers, for Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months, and then she went home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. What do you mean when the dog jumped on the uh, womb? John. Oh, John, yeah. Um, well, Elizabeth was the mom, and she was pregnant with John. And Mary came to Elizabeth to stay with her for a while. And, okay, so understand, she was pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. <clears throat> so Mary came and greeted her, and Elizabeth was excited to see her. John was excited because he knew she was pregnant with Jesus, the Savior. 
so he was jumping for joy inside his mouth because he heard Mary's voice and he knew Jesus is there, the Savior is there. And he knew that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was already with him. Already. That was God's promise that the Holy Spirit would come into him before he was even born.
himself will give you a sign. Look, yeah, operation will be pregnant and give birth to forward to 
Jesus. They were all here as examples so that people would know, okay, later when the Savior comes, the Savior will be like a prophet. He will be like a priest. He will be like a king. So the Old Testament prophets all were sinners. They all had weaknesses, but they preached Look forward to Jesus. What what kind of king of the prophets that? Oh, no, the other one. Oh, you mean prophet? Yes. Priest and king, which comes first? Yes. You mean in history? Yes. I guess a prophet because yeah, Moses was a prophet first but then soon after that God gave priests it was later on that God gave kings but the prophets were sinners but Jesus was the perfect prophet having no sin. He was perfect. All the kings were sinful. Some of them were terribly bad, rebellious against God. But still, their jobs showed, look forward to Jesus, who will be the perfect king. Well, the same for priests. The Old Testament priests were sinful. They were not perfect. But they could look forward to Jesus who would be the perfect priest. And the book of uh, Hebrews shows that. And chapter 10 also shows that the Old Testament priests were not perfect and could not be perfect. But Jesus is our perfect priest who did everything that we need. The Old Testament, what's a priest's job? A priest, what did he do for the people? No. A priest did many things, but I like to summarize it in three different things in his job. A priest would uh, teach the people. A priest was responsible to teach God's word for the people, to teach them to pray for them and to sacrifice for them. And Jesus did all of those. Uh, Jesus certainly taught, right? We talked about that with Jesus as a prophet. A prophet taught and preached. A priest also taught and preached. And Jesus certainly did that. We already saw Jesus preached and proclaimed God's law judging against those who wouldn't believe in him, but also preaching and proclaiming salvation for those who believed and trusted in Jesus as their Savior. Jesus prayed for people. Especially Jesus prayed for believers. Now in the Old Testament, God told the priests to pray for the people. That was an important part of their job. But how could a priest, a sinful priest, come before God? He could. He himself is a sinner. So the priest would have, in the Old Testament, the priest had to sacrifice before he could come before God to pray for them. But then God accepted him as the people's representative, that he was the one who could come before God to pray. <clears throat> well, Jesus is the perfect priest. He has no sin. Jesus has the right to come before God to pray for you because he is the one who can represent us, the one who can come to God to pray for you. And he does that now. 
He did that before when you lived here, and he continues to do that now to pray for you. Third, Old Testament priest sacrificed. They sacrificed every day. Every day they would go into the temple and kill the animal and sacrifice for the people's sins. Well, Jesus, of course, Jesus sacrificed himself for our sins. And that's what Hebrews chapter 10 is talking about. But I think that's the one that we understand the least. Uh, we understand teaching, right? Teaching and preaching. You went to school and you learn from your teachers every day. You experience teaching. And now, every week, you come here and you see God's Word preached. So you know about teaching and preaching. Prayer, you understand prayer. At home, you pray. Here in church, we pray. You understand that one. The sacrifice. That one is not really part of our daily life. Not much. Now, maybe you grew up in a time where people understood sacrifice a little bit more, you know, meaning, oh, uh, we can't have that. We have to give that up for whatever reason. You know, we don't have enough money, or we want to give that up because it's good for us to give up something, or we give up something to help another person. Maybe you understood that before, but today, our world understands sacrifice? Not much. Today, our world is about get it, get it, get it. I want. <coughs> um, of course, Christmas, yes, Christmas, five, give, get it for me. But that aside, <coughs> our world today really is about getting stuff. Maybe you see the news talking about supply chain problems. I don't know if you've been watching, if you noticed that. You, know, you go to a store, you want to buy something, you don't have it. Uh, maybe you've seen that at work a little bit, I don't know. Um, and the news, if you watch the news, they say, oh, you know, too many problems with transportation, not enough truck drivers, not enough people to unload everything from the ships from China. Now, the real problem, you want to know the real problem? People are buying too much. People are buying like crazy. That's why stores are running out of things, because people just more, 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 what for me? In our world today, if you ask someone, can you please give up something? Some people will. People still know how to give up things, some, but many times you ask someone to give up something, no. They don't want to give up anything. See, true sacrifice means someone or something is more important than me. So I'm giving up something for them, to help them. But people are not eager to do that. Why? Because I am more important. I don't love other people enough. I love me. Even if we do sacrifice, many times we sacrifice for me. I'll give up dessert because I'm trying to lose weight. Or I'll give up Starbucks for a few months because I'm trying to save money to buy a new phone. Or 
or I will sacrifice something and I will uh, give to help someone because it makes me feel good. Still doing that for me. Our lives are about me, not about others. The true sacrifice is not about me. True sacrifice is not about stuff. True sacrifice is about loving someone else. In the Old Testament, the priest's job is to serve people. That was his job, not his heart. Maybe it was his heart. If he was a good priest, then he truly loved his people and loved and wanted to serve them. But the priest had a job, and he did it. He sacrificed. And uh, more than the priest doing his job, think of the animal that died. I mean, the animal gave up his life to pay for people's sins. And that really is the truest sacrifice, right? Not giving up stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll give $100 for that, they're raising money for something. 100 bucks, sacrifice. True sacrifice means giving up your life. Jesus has our high priest, was priest, and sacrifice both. And it wasn't his job. He wanted to do that. Jesus didn't become a priest because his dad was a priest. In the Old Testament, that's how it worked. Dad was a priest, so the son was a priest. And his son was a priest. And it stayed in the family like that. God had commanded that. Jesus became a priest for you because he wanted to. What are you going to ask a question? Um. Like I said, the point that I love because do you want to be a proof that well God the Father will want to do this to be on earth and God is to give our sin. Yes. Yeah. Kings also. David was a king, his son was king. His son was king. His son was king. Each son. Actually, until Jesus. Jesus was in that line also. But Jesus was high priest because his dad was high priest. No, Jesus was high priest because he wanted to be. Because God sent him to come and become the priest and the sacrifice for us. He did it because loves you, not because he had to. He did it because his heart was full of love for you and wanting to save you. He became a sacrifice because he wanted to forgive your sins. No one else could do it, only Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 says, Jesus takes away the first thing, the offerings and the sacrifices. Then Jesus did the second thing, meaning Jesus did what God wants. Jesus Christ offered his body once for all people to make us holy. So the first thing, the offerings and the sacrifices were gone, were done. Jesus took those away because we don't need them. The Old Testament sacrifices are finished because Jesus did what God wanted. He sacrificed himself. An animal dying honestly cannot forgive your sins. But Jesus is God's own Son, holy and perfect. And his death does forgive your sins. Jesus was not serving himself. He 
gave up himself. He gave up his life. He became human. He was born so that he could die for you to take away your sins. Next week, we're going to talk about what that means for you in your daily life. But today, remember, Jesus, your high priest, the one who loves you so much that he gave up everything, he even gave up his own life so that you can have life. Um, you do all the Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. Yes. But that does not mean that Jesus was above father. Okay, okay, okay. Um,
from this world, but to trust you to take care of us so that we will search for the more important things from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you give your gracious help for your people, and you teach us that even though things may be difficult here, we still look to you for help and mercy. Please attend to your people now, who call out to you for your aid and salvation. We pray for those who have been affected because of the tornadoes last night. Bring comfort and help and peace to all those who are suffering from that. Give your aid to those who continue to struggle with COVID as it is increasing now again. Give your healing and strength for your people, for Chris, for Ricky and his family, for Nancy, Chris, Sharon, Paula, and Mark Willig. Give your comfort and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you that Chris's father had a good birthday this past Tuesday. Thank you for the blessings that you continue to give to him. Thank you also that Chris's daughter-in-law recently got a job that truly will be a blessing for her family. Please continue to watch over all of your people and give them blessings and joys in this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> You gave your son to take care of your people and to lead them in your mercy and wisdom. Please also give wisdom for our leaders here on earth, that they will rule and govern according to your will and do what is good for all people. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus our Savior. The Bible says it is right that we should always thank you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. We thank you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. John the baptizer prepared the way for Jesus and denounced him as the Savior, the Lamb of God. John called sinners to repent and escape judgment when Jesus comes again in glory. Therefore, God, we praise you with all the angels, the chief angels, and all believers on earth and in heaven, we praise and honor your glorious name. We always worship you and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Save us, help us, Lord in heaven, save us. Praise him who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord in heaven, save us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night that Judas betrayed him, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my by given for you. Do this to remember me. Same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, and 
and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, drink, this cup is the New Testament, my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you do this, do it to remember me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. Lord, now let your servant depart with peace, the same as your word promised. My eyes have seen your saving work. You prepared your saving work for all people to see. Your salvation is light for all people, and glory for your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to God because He is good. His mercy continues forever. We pray. Almighty God, thank you that you give us strength through this good gift of Jesus' body and blood. Thank you that you forgive our sins because of Jesus' sacrifice. Please continue to give us your Holy Spirit. <coughs> Fill us with your love that we may love and serve you and each other. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you.